Hello there, adventurers, and welcome to Wally DM. Today we're going to spotlight a puzzle idea that was submitted by my friend and patron of the channel, Immortal Origins. Our characters are on a quest to find an item, and along their quest, they encounter this art gallery. Inside this art gallery is the spirit of a painter, and four of his paintings are laying off in a corner without a frame, and they're not hung up on the wall. He'll need the characters to hang the paintings and put the correct frame on the artwork. And if they do that, then he'll let them know where they need to head next. Today is the puzzle of the lost art. Before we get started, just a reminder, if you have not joined our Discord yet, I highly encourage you to do so. Come on over and hang out with me and a lot of cool folks that know a lot about D&D. Also, I have recently updated the tiers and rewards, so please consider supporting us on Patreon. All donations go to support the channel, whether it be through miniatures and train for the videos or for future giveaways. So in this puzzle, our adventuring party enters this art gallery through this door here. And there are a ton of things to look at. This entire wall here, this entire wall here, and in between this door here, so on this wall as well, is just covered with paintings. And these paintings have different size frames, but most of them are in the color palette of grays, blacks, whites, and browns. Now, in addition to the paintings on the walls, we also have three more things that are very important for this puzzle. The first is this trunk over here that is open, and it has what looks like some unframed paintings inside of it. The second thing is this stack of painting frames, and these are all colors. They're white, black, brown, gray, blue, red, green, things of that nature. And the third thing, and probably what sticks out the most, is right here in the middle of this room is a spirit. Now this spirit is your stereotypical painter with the beret, the white bibs, a little bit of paint splashed on them, holding a color palette and paintbrush in hand. Now if our characters try to interact or get a conversation started with our spirit painter, it is not going to acknowledge them at this time. And if they try to come over here and sneak a peek at what the spirit is painting, it's a really weird situation as the spirit dabs its palette and puts a stroke of paint on the canvas, no sooner than the paint is on the canvas than it disappears. So there's actually nothing on the canvas whatsoever, but there's just like a little bit of paint every time that the every time that the spirit goes through and tries to apply it to the canvas. But the spirit doesn't act like it bothers him and just continues to make paint strokes as if he was really making a painting. However, if the characters come over here and explore the paintings in the trunk or start messing with these frames, that is when they're going to get the painter's attention. And at that time, he will acknowledge them. And I would like to think that this painter is going to be in a very happy mood. He is glad to see that the adventurers are here. And he knows why they're here. If they're here to retrieve an artifact or to retrieve a stolen painting or to find something that is hidden in this museum or castle or what have you, he's going to know that immediately and he'll bring that right up. He'll tell them, oh, I see that you're here looking for the artifact. And he's going to tell them that he can help. And he's going to allude to the fact that he can open a passageway for them so that they can find the item that they seek. But before he does that, he would like for the characters to take his masterpieces, his artwork, and hang it on the wall with an appropriate frame. And his reason for wanting them to do this is in his previous life, he was a painter and he was unappreciated as an artist. And they had always promised them that his paintings would hang in this art gallery. But unfortunately, his paintings are in a trunk with no frame around them. So he says that if the characters will put the frames on the paintings and hang the four paintings on the wall, then he will help them with their quest. Now, after this line of dialogue, the painter goes back to ignoring the characters. It's like they're not even there again. And at this point, until they solve the puzzle, he is no longer going to interact or have a conversation with the characters. So we have the puzzle in front of us. We've got four paintings and we've got some frames. So let's take a look at the puzzle. 
Okay, so our puzzle revolves around the paintings and putting the correct frame on each painting. So let's go over each painting. So painting A is going to depict a scene of two dwarves. And both of these dwarves have pickaxes and they're digging holes. And one of them seems to have found something and is holding up a large chunk of gold or a large chunk of ore. Now the other dwarf in the painting that has been working equally as hard sees that this dwarf has found something and is looking a little upset and kind of just staring at him with his hands on his hips. Painting B shows a scene of a woman that is wearing a long white dress and she's looking very sad, almost like she's crying. She is sitting with her back against a tree and in the background is a lake. Painting C is a young blonde girl in a blue dress and it looks like she's running and you can see fear in her eyes and behind her is a ghost rising from the grave. Painting D looks like a family celebrating a birthday of an elderly woman. We'll say this is grandma and she looks very excited to have all of her family around. Now at the beginning of the video, I probably stated a few additional colors in the stack of frames, but let's go with what I have here in the chart for the purpose of this puzzle. So if the characters dig through these stack of frames, they're going to find one blue frame, four green, four pink, one white, four black, and four brown. So with the information given with the frames and the four different paintings, do you know which frame goes on which painting? I'll give you a minute if you'd like to figure it out. Did you get it? Great. Let's go over the answer. Now the answer to this puzzle has nothing to do with the number of frames or the number of paintings that are already in the room. It has everything to do with what's called color idioms. And color idioms are expressions, at least in the English language, that provide some type of emotion that includes a color. So let's start with painting A. And again, this was a painting of two dwarves that were digging in the ground or in a cave or what have you. And one of them has found a nice chunk of ore or a nice chunk of gold and kind of holding it up like in, a, like in a victory stance that he found this and he's really happy about that. While the other dwarf is kind of looking on, maybe a little bit of an upset look with his hands on his hips and staring at the other one that is marveling at this treasure it just found. You could almost say that that dwarf that did not find anything is green with envy or jealous. So this painting is going to go in a green frame. The second painting, painting B, is of a woman in a long white dress and she looks very sad, almost like she's crying. And she's sit sitting on the ground with her back against a tree and there's a lake in the background. Of course, the lake and the tree have nothing to do with it. This woman is sad. You could almost say that she is feeling blue. And so her painting will go in a blue frame. Painting C is of a young girl in a blue dress. She is running with a look of fear on her face as there is a ghost rising from the grave in the background. You could say that she is white as a sheet. And so her painting is going to go in a white frame. And the final one, it's grandma's birthday. She's looking around, she's very delighted. You could almost say that grandma is tickled pink. And so her painting will go in a pink frame. And once our characters put all of these in the appropriate frames and they hang them up on the wall, our incorporeal painter will again acknowledge them, thank them for all that they did, and it will float over here and it will paint a door on this wall. And once it's done painting the door, it becomes real and our characters can walk through and continue on with their quest. So the key to solving the puzzle is through color idioms, which are expressions that use colors in different metaphorical meanings. So to be green with envy means to be jealous. To be white as a sheet 
means that you are scared. To be tickled pink means you're happy or delighted, and to be feeling blue could mean that you're sad. And I really liked it the way that these color idioms played into the puzzle, and we threw a few red herrings out there with a number of frames, a few of the different colored frames, and things of that nature. Now, of course, if the players put the wrong frame on the wrong painting, then we could have some negative effects happen. And Immortal Origins and I had a great time thinking of a bunch of different effects that could happen. A few of them include perhaps the painter flings paint at them for acid damage, or they need to make a wisdom saving throw, and if they fail, then they go around the room, they find paintbrushes and paint and some blank canvases, and they start painting nothing but pretty happy little trees. Uh, perhaps the painter gets angry and they have to make a saving throw or they get trapped in one of the other paintings that are in the room. Uh, perhaps it gets furious and they have to make a constitution saving throw or they age and there are all kinds of different things that we could come up with that. Now, how about hints if our players are starting to struggle? Well, there's two different hints that I could think of, and the first one involves if the character is looking over the shoulder of the painter as they were painting on the canvas. If you recall, there was just a little bit of paint, but it disappeared at, with the brush strokes. Well, we could make those the colors of the frames. So if they watch intently enough, maybe an investigation check or something like that, they'll see that there are some, a little bit of blue strokes, pink, white, green, and then rinse and repeat. Now the second hint that we can consider giving them is perhaps we have the painter conversate more with them, but in more emotions. Perhaps they're, they do something and it gets jealous, or perhaps they do something and he gets sad, like, oh, that was my favorite painting, or you know something like that. So we can use the four emotions, which are jealousy, sadness, fear, and happiness and channel that through the spirit and relay that onto the players. So that's all I have for you today. What did you think of the puzzle? Is this something that you could use in your game? If so, what might you do differently? Be sure to leave a comment below. It really helps the channel out a lot. Don't forget to subscribe and if you haven't hit that alert button to let you know when new videos are uploaded, go do that now. We've got all kinds of cool stuff coming up. Once again, thank you to Immortal Origins for submitting the puzzle idea. I had a lot of fun working with you on this, and I hope you liked the way it came out. Thanks everybody for watching. Take care, and on to the next.